presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Fibber McGee and Molly in Mama Loves Papa. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Certain elements just naturally belong together. April and showers, corned beef and cabbage, Fibber McGee and Molly. For several years, the irresistible Mr. McGee and the immovable Molly have been helping make this a more cheerful world. And their weekly broadcast has become a national habit. Tonight, for the first time, they assume the mantle and buskin of the actor in legitimate drama. More or less legitimate. And star for us in the play, Mama Loves Papa. The combination of Fibber McGee and Molly and the Lux Radio Theater is a brand new one. But as natural as the team of Lux Toilet Soap and a lovely lady. Fibber, Mc... Fibber and Molly are standard entertainment wherever there's a radio in a living room. Lux Toilet Soap is a standard wherever women are interested in how they look. And that, well, covers a lot of ground. The chief problem we faced in arranging this production was persuading Fibber that he was an actor. After a long argument in my office, I finally had to threaten to play the part myself. For the public's sake, he gave in. And after a week's rehearsal, I, I can really salute Fibber and Molly as two great troopers who deserve the stars on their dressing room doors. There's something genuinely American about their humor, something in the grand old tradition of Mark Twain and all those who, who taught us how to laugh at ourselves. Mama Loves Papa takes Fibber and Molly into new territory when Fibber, as Wilbur Todd, quite accidentally, gets involved in politics. As Mrs. Todd, Molly is still his chief counselor and does her part to get him out of trouble after she's gotten him in. Our part at the moment is to see that the curtain goes up right away on the first act of Mama Loves Papa, starring Fibber McGee as Wilbur Todd and Molly as Jesse Todd. It's the locale of our story didn't have to have a name, we'd call it Average City, USA. If our characters didn't have to be called something distinctive, we'd refer to them as Mr. and Mrs. Everybody. As it is, our story takes place in Glenville, and our people are the top. Like most of us, they're an average, everyday, perfectly normal and happy family. Also like most of us, they have ham and eggs for breakfast, slightly burned toast, and a mild domestic fat. They've reached the last call. The fat. All right, all right. Now, what's the trouble? I didn't say anything was the trouble. Did I say anything? Well, then why give me that black look? I'm just passing it on, Mama. This toast has been giving me a black look. See? Now, listen, there's nothing wrong with that toast, Wilbur. Just a little burnt on the edges. That's good for you. It's uh, why that's charcoal. I don't like charcoal, even with butter on it. Besides, Mama, it worries me. I know where to go to get cinders out of my eye, but when I get them in my now, throat... Now, now, you listen here, Wilbur. I've told you time and time again we need a new toaster. If you hadn't been so selfish and given up smoking, we'd have enough coupons by now to get a really decent one. All right, Mama, all I right. I can't get you off to work every morning and straighten your suspenders and shave the back of your neck and find your other sleeve garter and watch the toaster all at the same time, Wilbur. <laughs> But, Mama, I didn't... What we need is a maid. Wilbur, stop scraping that toast whilst I'm speaking to you. Oh, oh, excuse me, Mama. What were you saying? I said what we need is a maid. And we could have one, too, if you just had a little more gumption. How's gumption going to get a maid? You know what I'm talking about. They don't appreciate you down at that office. You know they don't. Uh-huh. You're worth twice the money you're getting now. Uh-huh. More than twice the money. And if I were you, I'd certainly ask for it. Uh-huh. How long have you been working for Mr. Kirkwood? Uh-huh. Oh! Uh, ten years. Ten years. And not one raise in all that time. Not one raise. Who does he think you are? I got a bonus once. You know what's the trouble with you, Wilbur? You're afraid of yourself. You haven't got any confidence in your own ability. Your thoughts are all, 
all focused inside of you. You're always scared of what people are thinking. You're a, you're a, uh, invertert, Wilbur. Introvert. Hmm? You mean introvert. How do you know? I read the same magazine article. Well, anyway, that's what you are. What you've got to do is show off a little. Crack jokes with people. Act big. Then they think you are somebody. Like that Mr. Phillips next door. He's no invertert. Introvert. Well, he isn't. Well, besides, I don't know any jokes. Well, you could make some up, couldn't you? I don't know, maybe. You, hey, you really think that would help, huh? Well, it certainly couldn't do any harm. Oh, Wilbur, I don't mean to be always kicking on you, but we're just not getting anywhere. You see that, don't you? We're right where we were the day we got married. I hate to think of where we might be ten years from now. It's only for your own good, Wilbur. I know. You're right, Mama. But but don't worry. Things will be okay, and I'll... Well, I'll crack jokes with the best of them. You wait and see. Oh, it's not just cracking jokes. Well, you said it would help. Oh, Wilbur. Oh, gosh. There's the 810. I've got to run. Finish your coffee. No time, Mama. Where's your hat? I got it. So long, Mama. Be back on the 6-5. Aren't you going to kiss me? Oh, sure. Goodbye. Be a good girl and don't take any wooden nickels. <laughs> don't you get it, Mama? It ain't said... funny, Wilbur. Oh, well. <laughs> I do better on Tuesdays. Now, let's see, Miss Baedeker. Where were we in that letter? And you may expect this order as soon as possible. That's right. Now, take this. Uh, let me see, uh... Mr. Todd, I wish you'd hurry. i got to take eight letters for Mr. Johnson yet. Name's familiar. But don't rush me, Miss Baedeker. Oh, here it is. Oh, uh, uh, the, uh, the shipment will include the additional furniture for the sanctuary. Yours very truly, Kirkwood Furniture Company, Pearl Will Bataille. That'll be all, Miss Baedeker. And that last sentence is that word sanctuary? Yes, sanctuary. Sanctuary much. <laughs> huh? <laughs> oh, never mind, never mind. <laughs> Hey, hey, Todd. Yes, Mr. Burke, what is it? The boss wants to see you. Better get in there. Oh, sure. Hey, Burke, a rather amusing thing just happened here. I was dictating... Yeah, yeah, oh, see me later, will you? And don't forget about Mr. Kirkwood. Oh, oh sure, sure. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Kirkwood. Come in, Todd. What took you so long? Well, I was just... In... Todd, I want to speak to you about that Chicago consignment. We're way behind in our shipment. And if we don't put our shoulders to the wheel, we lose the whole order. Now, I want you to bear down on the facts. Make them jump, hear? Jump? Yes, sir. I want action, and lots of action. Oh, you'll get it, Mr. Kirkwood. Yes, sir. <laughs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> oh, oh, pardon me, Mr. Kirkwood, but a rather amusing thing happened this morning. Huh? Yeah. I said a rather amusing little thing happened this morning. Miss <laughs> Baedeker said to me, uh, I was dictating, you know, and she said to me, uh, uh, Mr. Todd, was that last word sanctuary? <laughs> and I said, yes. Sanctuary much. <laughs> it was, uh, it was, uh, sort of a, a joke, you know, uh, comical. Todd, are you crazy? Huh? I'm just through talking myself hoarse to you, and you stand there and tell me jokes. But, Mr. Kirkwood, I That's don't... the whole trouble with business today. Everybody thinks it's funny. But, Mr. You don't see me laughing, do you? I'll say so. Well, remember that. And if you can't remember it, let me remind you that there are always ten men waiting to take over your desk. Now, get out! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You. <laughs> oh, Mr. Todd, I was just thinking over what you said. Sanctuary much. That's very funny, Mr. Todd. It is, huh? <laughs> it means I like saying thank you very much, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, I didn't get it before. Hmm. Oh, I almost forgot your wife's on the phone, Mr. Todd. Oh, thanks. Hello, Mama. Hello, Wilbur. How's everything going, dearie? Oh, fine, fine. Just dandy. I just wanted to remind you that I'm going to the ladies' club meeting this afternoon. Oh, you want me to pick up the hamburger on my way home? Uh, will you, Papa? We're going to have a pretty important speaker today. Dr. Basil Payne on marriage with her bound. I wouldn't want to miss that. Oh, no, no. Of course not. Well, you run along and have a good time, Mama. Uh, Goodbye. 
Marriage with her bomb. Hmm. I'd like to hear that one myself. And so, in conclusion, let me leave one thought with you, ladies. That behind every man's success in this world, there is a woman. Who was behind Napoleon? Why, Josephine, of course. And who was behind George Washington? Martha. And who was behind King Solomon? <laughs> King Solomon had a great deal behind him. <laughs> oh, but seriously, though, in every man's heart, ladies, is the seed of success, waiting, waiting in the darkness for the sunshine of a woman's encouragement to make it flower. Thank you. Now, uh, are there any questions, ladies? Well, uh, uh, Dr. Payne... Yes, madam? What I want to know is... Well, how exactly can I shine on my husband? <laughs> well, may I see you after the meeting, madam? Now, uh, are there any more general questions? Mm -hmm. I want to help Wilbur, but I just don't know how to go about it. I thought maybe you could suggest something. Uh, well, Mrs. Todd, uh, just what seems to be the trouble with your husband? Well, now I'll tell you. In the first place... Uh, just a moment. I haven't had too much time. Uh, my train, you know. Oh, well... Mrs. Uh... Todd, uh, have you ever thought of the value of uh, clothes? Clothes? As an expression of personality. Oh. As an advertisement, so to speak. Oh, yes. To tell the world exactly what we are or what we would like to be. Uh, does your husband dress well? Uh, no, just warm. I thought so. Uh, he looks like an unsuccessful man, and so he is an unsuccessful man. Oh. He tells the world beforehand that no one is to take him too seriously, that his opinion on any matter of importance is not worth knowing. Oh, you mean if Wilbur would dress up a little, he'd get along, oh, huh? But of course, my dear oh. lady. There's something about clothes, the right kind of clothes, that keeps the man on his toes, spiritually alert, as it were. Oh. You try it. Make him dress well, look important. And then watch him take his place in the world. Dr. Payne, I think you've got it. Now, I won't do it. I won't wear a high hat for anybody. No, sir. Now, now, Wilbur, I don't want any nonsense. You try that hat on again and see how it looks. But a high silk hat, Mama. What will people think of me? How can I face my friends in a high silk hat? You haven't got any friends. Well, I can hope, can't I? Oh, gosh, Mama, listen. Uh, have you decided, sir, uh, what that will be, please? Uh, this one here, the silk one. No, sir, I won't wear it. Wrap it up, please. Yes, but uh, Mama, will you listen a minute? Keep quiet. Uh, anything else, sir? No. Oh, yes, there is. He wants uh, what goes with it, you know, with the high silk cap. Oh, yes, yes, of course. The morning coat. Yes, the morning coat. And striped pants and a pair of sacks. For me? And I want everything to be an expression of his personality. Sir. I'll try, madam. Uh, Emile, here. Mama, you're making a terrible mistake. This is a waste of money. Uh, measure the gentleman for a morning coat and trousers, Emile. Uh, we meet here. Uh, Mama, will you yes, just be reasonable? Stand still, Wilbur. When am I going to wear this? I haven't been to a wedding in ten years. You're not going to a wedding. Well, what started this anyway? I don't... <laughs> What's the matter? He tickles. <laughs> oh, cut it out, bud. Cut it out. <laughs> Now, listen, Mama. Now, sir, uh, if you just step over this way, we'll see you. Mama. Mama, please don't let them do this to me. Wilbur, it's no you. If you had heard Dr. Payne yesterday, you'd realize what it means to be well-dressed. You've got to advertise yourself, Wilbur. Oh, Dr. Payne. So, I've got him to thank for this, huh? Dr. Payne is a very successful man. Well, whatever. I'll bet he wasn't all dressed up in a high hat and fat, was he? No, he wasn't. Well, there you are. But he probably is dressed up when he goes to business. Yeah, when he goes to... Mama. Mama, you, you don't mean that you expect me... You can't mean in the office? That high hat? Oh, no, Mama. No! Oh, now, someday, Wilbur, you'll thank me for this. Oh, Mama. <laughs> Gwenny, Gwenny, did you see Mr. Todd this morning? Yeah, I saw him come in. He had on a silk hat. Yeah, and sat and sat. Gee, he looked awful pale, didn't he? Yeah, it's too bad, all right. I sure feel sorry for him. 
Good morning, Todd. Oh, hello, Burke. I'm awfully sorry, Todd. Was it anyone close? Huh? Well, uh, when's the funeral? Today? Oh, oh the oh, the funeral. <laughs> yes, it's the funeral. Oh, we, well, we couldn't help but notice, Todd, the clothes and all. Oh, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, of course. And the whole force wants me to express their regrets. And, well, now, if there's anything we can do, uh, don't hesitate, will you? <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Good morning, Miss Fadiger. Good morning, Mr. Good morning, Bert. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Todd. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Todd. Uh, the immediate family? Well, uh, good morning, Mr. Kirkwood. No, not very immediate. Uh, Mrs. Todd's uncle. Oh, no, that's too bad. That's too bad. Well, now listen, you needn't hang around, Todd. You, you, you just take the day off. Oh, but Mr. Kirkwood, that won't be necessary. Huh? Oh, well, uh, I mean... <laughs> Uh, the noon hour will be sufficient. Nonsense, nonsense. You ought to be home consoling Mrs. Todd. Now go on, run along. Run along, Todd. Oh, but Mr. Kirkwood... Now Kirk, you what... do as I say. Well, all right. Thank you. Not at all. And, oh, Todd. Yes, sir? I'm sorry, Todd. Get all dressed up to go to work, and they think I'm going to a funeral. I've got to walk in the park all day because I'm all dressed up. No place to go. Got to go walking in the park. Mama, mama, mama! Look at the funny man! Look at the funny man's clothes! <laughs> oh, cut it out, sis! Oh, dear! You mustn't laugh at him, dear. He's earning his living. How does he earn his living, Mama? Why, his chest lights up with a sign, dear. That's a lie. My chest does not light up, madam. Mama, he's mad. Come, dear. Don't pay any attention to him. I think he's crazy. Chest lights up with a sign. Hmm. Mama, he's mad. Well, who wouldn't be mad? Walking around in a park all dressed up like you're going to... What's the matter with the world today? I'll tell you what's the matter with the world today, gentlemen. It's the idle rich, that's what. It's the idle rich to walk around in high hats and... Back the long tail top. Oh, well, look who's coming. Yeah, now, get a load of that, gentlemen. Hey, you. Is you talking to me? Certainly I'm talking to you. Come here, buddy. Are you a waking man, buddy? Are you waking today, buddy? Uh, well, uh, no, no, not today. Not today, he said. <laughs> not today, huh? What day, then, buddy? Well, I just... I... No day, that's what day. Take a good look at him, folks. The idle rich, bloated with food, reeking with champagne. Now, listen, I never bloated with Who champagne. Who do you think you are, buddy? Walking around here, flouting your wealth in our face. I am not flouting my... Now, get back to your limousine. This here park is for the common people. Not pretty, Eli. Now you wait a minute, my fine feathered friend. You can't talk to me Folks, like that. Are we gonna stand for this? Get him out of here. He's a blood on the limb. Okay. You better beat it, mister. What for? I haven't done anything. I got my Come right. On, folks. Give him the wait. Oh, cut it out now. Cut it out. Let me along. Stay yeah, after the folks. Get the idle wing. Give him the wait. Are we gonna stand for this sort of thing? Give it to the folks. Come on. Come on. Well, I think now I've got a pack of hoodlums after me. Police! Police! Help! Help! Police! Right over here, sir. Right over here. Oh, officer, I'm certainly glad to see you. Oh, I need your help, officer. Yes, sir, Commissioner. Yes, sir. I know all about it, and I'll get you there right away, Commissioner. Commissioner? Who's the commissioner? Just get right on the motorcycle, Commissioner. Now, wait a minute, officer. I'm waiting for you, sir. The car went out a half an hour ago. Be on the lookout for the Commissioner of Parks. He's late. Get on the handlebars. <coughs> now, wait. This has gone far enough, officer. Commissioner, do you want me to lose my job? Now, please, please get on the motorcycle. But where are you taking me? To the dedication exercises of the new playground. That's where you want to go, isn't it? What new playground? I don't know anything about a new playground. Well, you're supposed to be there, so they've been waiting for you. They can't dedicate the playground without the Commissioner of Parks, you know. Listen, I am not the Commissioner. Hang on, Commissioner. Take it easy. Take it easy. Don't worry, Commissioner. I'll have you there. No time at all. Oh, Miss, you 
Old playground, ladies and gentlemen. This monument to the youth of our city will stand as a great reminder that the growing boys and girls of today are the future voters of tomorrow. We must remember that this playground is a... Mrs. McIntosh, are you sure the commissioner was no decide to be here? Of course he was. My husband telephoned him this morning to remind him. Well, is he always this late? But how should I know? I've never seen him in my life. Nobody has. But it was your husband had him appointed, wasn't it? Now, just a minute, Mr. Thomas. It was my husband that had you appointed, too. And if you have any complaints, make them to him and not to me. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. McIntosh. Hey, Thomas, he's here. The commissioner. Well, get him up here. Well, here. Here he is, Mr. Thomas. Now, listen, officer, this is a terrible mistake. Oh, Commissioner, you're, you're, you're late. Have you got your speech ready? Speech? What speech? Well, then you'll have to make it up as you go along. Ladies and gentlemen, he has just arrived. The Commissioner of Park. <laughs> go ahead, Commissioner. <laughs> I don't know. Go ahead. Well, all right, then. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, listen, I'm not going to make a speech in this rain, mister. Everybody's leaving anyway. All right, forget it. Uh, just a minute, Commissioner. Can we get just one picture, please? What's this way, Commissioner? I wish somebody'd listen to me. I'm not the Commissioner. Oh, Mr. McIntosh, would you get in this, please? Oh, of course. Right here? That's it. Get in the swing there. Oh, Commissioner, you give Mrs. McIntosh a push, please. But I'm not the... There we are. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner. Now, wait, wait. My name is Todd. I'm Wilbur Todd. Is that one D or two, sir? <laughs> Todd. T-O-D-D. That's my name. Yes, sir. Thank you, Commissioner Todd. We'll get the name right. Don't worry. Don't so long, worry. Commissioner. Oh. And thanks. Oh. Just a second. What did you say your name was? Todd? Todd. With two Ds. Then you're not Mr. Roberts, the park commissioner? Todd, lady. With two Ds. Well, if you're not the commissioner, what are you doing here? Well, that's what I'd like to know. I'm going home. And I just dare anybody to stop me. I just dare them, that's all. Good afternoon, Todd. Oh, oh, oh. why, Mr. Kirkwood. Yes, very strange I should happen to be at this dedication, isn't it? Uh, yes, sir. I mean... And uh, it's th- also very strange that you should be here, Todd. Oh, Mr. Kirkwood, I-, I can explain it. I can explain everything. I'm sure you can. For shame, Todd. Why, Mr. Kirkwood... If Kirk- you wanted a day off, why didn't you ask? but to use the death of a dear relation as an excuse to... Oh, for shame. But my dear relation didn't die, Mr. Kirkwood. Then you lied. Yes, sir. Or no, sir. If there's one thing I can't abide, it's a fibber. Todd, you're fired. Oh, In just a moment, Fibber McGee and Molly will return in Act Two of Mama Loves Papa. Do you remember a game you played when you were a child? Musical chairs, I think it's called. There's one less chair than there are children. So each time the music stops, one child is left out. Remember? Go on, keep on marching, Bobby. No, no. No more to stop until the music really stops. No, no, Tommy, dear, get out. You must sit down till it stops. That's it. Don't hold on. Now. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, he's won. Oh, Never mind, Tommy. to win. Tommy, come here. There, now, don't cry. You know, it's Bobby's birthday, and don't you think on his birthday it's nice for him to win? Yes, Mrs. Dean. I am glad he won, because he's your little boy. And you're awful nice. Gee, I like you, Miss Dean. You're so pretty. And and you smell so nice. (laughs) Why, Tommy. (laughs) Mrs. Dean is amused at Tommy's little boy compliment. But she's pleased, too. Because she's clever enough to know there's nothing makes a woman more attractive than that sort of immaculate freshness that women call dinkiness. Men just know a woman is nice to be near. They're likely to tell her she's sweet. And clever women like Mrs. Dean do everything they can to protect this charm always. Thousands of them are taking the screen star's tip and using Lux toilet soap as a bath soap, too. They find a daily bath with luxurious, active lather a delightful way to make daintiness sure. If you're not now enjoying the luxury of a daily Lux toilet soap beauty bath, 
Get three cakes of this fragrant gentle soap and try it, won't you? You'll love the way Lux Toilet Soap's rich, creamy lather caresses your skin. Swiftly carries away every trace of dust and dirt. You'll like the delicate, clinging perfume it leaves on your skin. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Mama Loves Papa. Starring Fibber McGee as Wilbur Todd and Molly as Jesse Todd. Bright and early the following morning, the newspapers appear on the streets of Glenville. On page one, under the title, Upsy Daisy, is a photograph of one Wilbur Todd, attired in silk hat and fat, engaged in pushing a swing. On the swing is pictured Mrs. Franklin Avery McIntosh. The photograph and the story make very interesting reading, especially for Mr. McIntosh. Upsy Daisy. Park Commissioner Wilbur Todd makes merry with Mrs. Franklin Avery McIntosh at opening of new playground. Mr. Wilbur Todd, unknown before yesterday afternoon, pops up suddenly as our new commissioner of public park. Who is this rabbit anyway? I never saw him before. Now, don't get all excited. His name is Todd. Yes, yes, I can see that, but who is he? Who is he? Where was Robert? Your very obedient Commissioner Roberts, darling, never showed up. Oh, he didn't show up, huh? No word, no excuse. And suddenly, there was Todd. Yeah, popped out of nowhere to give you a push in the swing, huh? Oh, don't be ridiculous. I hope you're not going to be jealous of a simpleton like that. Yeah? Now, listen, Gladys, there's more than jealousy involved here. Don't you realize what this story does? No, I don't. All right, then let me explain. Do you know those pretty gowns and fur coats that you're so fond of? Do you know how I get them, my sweet? I sell furniture and playground equipment to our fair city. And the only reason I can tell to our fair city is that I have enough influence at the city hall to appoint my own commissioner. Oh, shut up! Shut up, shut up. That's all you Talk can say. Talk to me shut as up. if I was a child. Well, maybe you are. If you're such a wizard at politics, why don't you appoint a commissioner with brains? Because I don't want anybody with brains. Brains are a drug on the market. What I want is a moron. Well, you've certainly got one in Roberts. Oh, Roberts. Roberts is through. I couldn't keep him in the job now if I wanted to. Not after this mess. Well, then, appoint a new sure, one. Sure, sure, appoint a new one. Just like that. Well, the newspapers have done that for me. Wilbur Todd, our new commissioner of public park. Wilbur Todd makes merry with Mrs. Franklin Avery. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Gladys, this, uh, this Todd person, what was he like? I told you, he looks like a, a radio comedian. A died in the wool zone. A died in the wool zone. Yes, 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 but what does he do? Well, from what I could understand from the guy who was bawling him out, he's now unemployed. Oh, he is, huh? Well, well. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Reed. Get me the city hall. Up she danger. Commissioner Wilbur Todd makes merry with Mrs. Franklin Avery McIntosh at opening. Oh, Mama, stop it, will you? You've read that thing 20 times. And I'm still trying to understand it. And I'm still trying to understand why you're not going to work this morning. I, I told you, Mama. I I was fired. Why? Look, Mama. It all started yesterday morning when I, well, when I left the office to go to the funeral. Whose funeral? Well, your uncle's funeral. My uncle's funeral. That man never had a sick day in his life, and yesterday you went to his funeral. But I didn't go. Well, how could you if he isn't dead? Oh, Mama, let's start all over again. You got me all dressed up yesterday morning. Not to go to a funeral. That's what you think. I never mentioned my uncle. Not a word. Did I tell you my uncle was dead? Did I? No, Mama. Well, heavenly days. Who did tell you? <laughs> the boss. The boss. The boss told you that my uncle was dead. Oh, Mama, skip it, skip it. Nobody died. I didn't go to a funeral. I went in and out in the park to take a walk. Now we're getting someplace. Go on. <laughs> and the next thing you know, that woman said my chest lit up. Ah. Chest lit up. Mm-hmm. Go on, Wilbur. Well, then there was that other fellow I had to run away from because he told everybody I was loaded with food and reeking with champagne. Ah, champagne. Mm-hmm. And when the cop put me on the handlebars, well, I didn't know what to say. Mm-hmm. Wilbur, it's all very plain. Well, that's good. 
I got you all dressed up yesterday to try to make a success out of you. And you went out and got drunk. <laughs> Mama, I didn't get drunk. I didn't. Oh, it's no use, Wilbur. I can smell it on you right now. Mama, how can I prove it to you? Tell me how, Mama. I'm sorry, Wilbur, but you're a great disappointment to me. There's the door. I'll answer it, No, Mama. don't try to get up. I'll do it myself. Huh? You'd probably fall flat on your face. What is it, please? Good morning. Is Todd here? Yes, he is. Who wants him? Uh, we're from the city hall. The city hall? Right in, gentlemen. Wilbur! Wilbur, the city hall is here. Oh, there you are, Mama. There. I guess this will prove it to you. They want me for impersonating a commissioner. It's Todd. All right, Bud. I'll go quietly. Oh, Wilbur. Just a moment, Mr. Todd. I have a little paper here. Ah, oh, yes. Know all men by these presents. Well, that, that won't be necessary. Just don't put the cuffs on me, that's all. <laughs> oh, Wilbur. One moment, please. By these presents, that by the power invested in me by the people of Glenville, I do hereby decree as of this state written that Wilbur Todd be appointed Commissioner of Public Parks. Commissioner oh, of... Mama! No, oh, of Public Park. Oh, Wilbur, a public man. Congratulations, Mr. Todd. Mama, what you said about me falling on my... Uh, yes, Wilbur. Here's our good friend Frank McIntosh, the man that you and the city have to thank for your appointment. How are you, Commissioner? Hi, bud. I hope I'll be able to justify the faith you've placed in me. <laughs> Why, of course you will. Well, boys, suppose we run along. Oh, oh wait. Uh, don't let me uh, put you out of your office. My office? <laughs> Commissioner, this is your office. It is? Gee. Leather, chairs, and everything. Well, say, I... Well, look, uh, anytime any of you fellows want to use the phone, uh, just come in here. I, I, I seem to have three of them. <laughs> so long, Commissioner. <laughs> well, Todd, how are you going to like public life? Well, I... I don't know what to say about all this. I I never been a big shot before. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get used to it. Oh, have a cigar? Well, thanks, but I... Oh, I'm... go ahead. Go ahead. Well, Todd, if you're the smart man I think you are, you'll go far down here. I'll see to that. You know, you look like a man interested in little kitties. Oh, yes. Yes, I am. I, I'm very fond of kitties. <laughs> They're so... so full of uh, youth, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm fond of them myself. Like to see him get lots of fresh air, lots of play. You know, build young America. Yes, indeed. You see, I manufacture playground equipment. Oh, is that so? Yes, been filling the city's orders for years. Oh, by the way, did you know Robert? Robert? Yes, he had this job before you, but he bought equipment from another company. He got it cheaper, but the stuff's no good. Now, my price is high, but so is my quality. You understand? Oh, high quality. Sure, sure. I understand, Mr. McIntyre. Oh, call me Frank. <laughs> Okay, Frank. Uh, my name's Wilbur. Uh, call me Todd. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, Todd, any time I can be of any help to you, just call on me. Oh, by the way, here's a little paper you might sign. An order for some new equipment. Nothing important, just a few thousand dollars. Oh, a few thousand, eh? Mm -hmm. uh, sounds reasonable. I'll look it over. You'll look it up. Oh. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, of course. Well, so long, Todd. So long, Frank. I don't know how to thank you for all this. Thank Mrs. McIntosh. She's the one. Mrs. McIntosh? Yes. He says you sure push a mean swing. Oh, oh, oh God. Say that. That was funny, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, are you married, Todd? Yes, sir. I certainly am. To the sweetest little woman in the world. Fine. Well, why don't you two come over to my place this weekend? We've got some people coming. The right people. You know, nothing like meeting the right people. Oh, that'd be wonderful. Good. We'll look for you. Well... So long, Todd. So long, Frank. Oh, uh, wait. Uh, yes? Um, uh, have a cigar. Hello? Hello, is this you, Mama? Listen, Mama, I don't think I'll be able to get home for dinner tonight. Do you mind? I gotta see the boys about something. I'm awfully sorry, Mama. Hello? Is this you, Mama? Well, this is Wilbur. Won't be able to make it for dinner tonight, Mom. I gotta see the mayor. Pretty important. Don't wait up. Yes, I know. You've got to see the governor this time, I suppose. Oh, all right, Wilbur. No, I'm not mad. I'm just 
All right, Wilbur. Goodbye. There you are, Mama. The West Side Playground. And it's all mine. I always had an idea it belonged to the city. Oh, well, you know what I mean. It's me being the commissioner and all, it's, it's, it's like a dream, isn't it? Well, it has its point. It's nice you being a public official and all, and plenty of money for each change. You mean plenty of money instead of change. <laughs> How am I doing, Mama? Uh, <laughs> you're improving, Wilbur, slow but sure. All right, sir, all right. We'll send you home and have it fixed. It's Hey, something must have happened. Oh, that little lad has a cut knee. Now, 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 go ahead, Johnny. Uh, you take him home, will you? Oh, attendant. Attendant. Oh, good morning, Commissioner. Something happened to that kid? Oh, yes, sir. A seesaw broke and cut his leg open. Oh, say, that's bad. Does that kind of thing happen often? Well, not here, but uh, over in East Park last month, there were four accidents. One pretty serious. It's faulty material, Commissioner. Oh, no, 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 that's impossible. <laughs> Why, his stuff has quality. He said so himself. Well, it might have had quality once, sir, but it's getting awful old. Well, uh, good morning, sir. Mama, did you hear that? I thought you told me there was new equipment being bought all the time. Mm, there is. Must be a mistake someplace. You know, when we go over to Macintosh's party, I think I'll ask him about this. <laughs> Don't look now, darling, but the Macintoshes are inviting the most peculiar people. Who is she? Oh, you mean the one in the, uh, dress? Well, if you can call it that. Well, don't laugh, but that's the park commissioner's wife. No. Careful. Excuse me, but, uh, have you seen my husband? No, I I'm afraid I haven't. Come on, Janice. Mm. Nice, friendly people around here. Oh, I beg your pardon, madam. Yes? I'm looking for my husband. Well, I'm sure I'm not hiding him. <laughs> isn't it wonderful how men can hide away and talk business all night? Yes, isn't it? Of course, I guess my husband's pretty busy with Mr. McIntosh. My husband's a public official. Hmm, how interesting. What does your husband do? Oh, he's still governor of the state. Oh. Good night. Uh, good night. Well? Come over here. Listen, I'm having trouble with that Todd person. Again? Yes, he's been asking a lot of fool questions about the equipment we delivered months ago, and I don't like it. And he's got an order in his pocket he's been carrying around ever since I had him appointed. Now I want that order signed. Tonight. Oh, what's the big rush? Oh, darling, do as I say. Get him to sign that thing, and I'll have him where I want him. He won't be able to open his mouth, then. Well, what am I, a magician? How can I make him sign anything? Oh, Gladys, please, for the sake of that, that, that new bracelet you've been asking for. Oh, all right. Well, thank heaven. Oh, there he is. Go ahead and good luck. Oh, uh, Mr. Todd. Mr. Todd. Good evening, Mrs. McIntosh. Uh, all alone, Mr. Todd? No, I'm just looking for Mama. I mean, my wife. Oh, I'm sure she's all right. Uh, come and have some champagne. Champagne? Oh, I, I don't usually indulge oh, in... Oh, but you will with me, won't you? <laughs> well, I... Oh, I guess. <laughs> well... Come on, Mr. Todd. We'll find a nice, quiet spot all by ourselves. for Commissioner Todd. Have you seen my husband? Has anybody seen my husband? Go on, Mr. Todd. Have some more. No, no more, no more. Oh, it's awful good. <laughs> it certainly is. But it's no more. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, what about that paper thing? No. Saber thing? Ah, oh, you know, the thing you were going to sign. <laughs> oh, the thing I... Oh, let's talk some more about that. Oh, no, no, no more talk. <laughs> no more talk, Mrs. McIntosh? Oh, call me Gladys. Call me Todd. <laughs> Todd! What? Oh, that's a cute name. Yeah. yeah I'm getting sleepy. How do you... 
sell it. <laughs> Sleeping? No, Todd. How do you sell it? <laughs> oh. T O double. <laughs> well, uh, write it down and let me see. No pen. Well, I got one. Here. No paper. Oh. Uh, maybe you got some in your pocket. Pocket? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. What's that? Paper. Now, right. Spell out your name and let me see. Huh? Where? Uh, right there. Down there. Won a medal for fellowship once. No. Sure. Palmer Method. Oh. Watch this. I got curly cues on the end. <laughs> W-I-L-B-U-R. Curly Q. Oh, oh, that's wonderful. Go on. <laughs> Capital C-O-D-D-E. Curly Q. How's that? Oh, Todd, it's beautiful. Can I keep it? Sure. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I'm sleepy. Oh. I could go to sleep, right? I could go to sleep. Oh. Excuse me, I didn't... Oh. Oh, uh, come in, Mrs. Todd. I'm afraid your husband is rather tired. Yes, he certainly looks it. He's a charming man. You ought to take better care of him. Put this ice bag on. Oh, oh, oh. What time is it? Three o'clock in the morning. Three o'clock? How do we get home? We didn't hitchhike. I wouldn't know. I could only remember what happened. Isn't it terrible, Mama? I can't remember. No, it doesn't matter. Nothing matters anymore. What do you mean by that? It's not your fault, Wilbur. It's mine. I just don't fit into your high sphere. What are you talking about, Mama? Ah, oh, well, Dr. Payne says that a wife has got to be a help to her husband. If she isn't that, then she isn't anything. I thought I was doing such a wonderful thing when I tried to make you over. Well, I've made you over, and I've put you out of my class. I can't help you now, Wilbur, so I'm just getting out. Oh, no. You can't. You can't do that. I won't make any fuss or scandal. I'll just... Please. Oh, but Mama... Then you can go on and be a success without me hampering you. But Mama, I wouldn't know what to do without you hampering me, Mama. I'm sorry, Wilbur. My mind's made up, and you know me when I make up my mind. Does your head feel any better, dearie? I don't know. It'll be all right in the morning. Good night, Wilbur. Good night. <laughs> In just a few moments, our stars, Fibber McGee and Molly, will return in Act Three of Mama Loves Papa. Now, let's imagine we're looking on at a scene at Pasadena Station. Golly, I don't see her. You thought she decided not to come. There she is, there, all in gray. Don't you see? Oh, she looks lovely. You ho, Barbara. Here we are. Come on, Marie. Let's grab this taxi so we can get her home fast. <laughs> Well, Barbara, here we are. This is your room. Think you'll like it all right? Think you like Hollywood? Oh, it's a darling little room. Look at the view. Real palm trees and mountains. Oh, look. That must be a screen star. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you wear slacks and dark glasses? Oh, no, Barbie. Why, there are hundreds of girls here who do that. That's probably some poor little extra like us. But don't worry. You're going to meet some screen stars very soon now. Oh, Anne, you mean really meet them? Oh, tell me who. Mm, that's surprise, Rand. We'll tell you this much, Bob. We've been invited to have lunch with Loretta Young today. Loretta Young? Oh, oh goodness, I've got to start primping right away. Here's my soap. She's brought Lux soap. She's brought Lux soap to Hollywood. Well, of course I have, and I'm just about to give myself an active lather facial. What's so surprising about that? I thought practically everyone in Hollywood used Lux soap. 
Of course, Barbie. Practically every girl in the movies here uses Lux soap. That's just the point. We've stacks of Lux soap in the bathroom. Always. And now, Barbara, eager to look her best when she meets some of the famous screen beauties she's admired for so long, is giving herself an active lather facial with Lux Toilet Soap. Just the way the screen stars do. Loretta Young, Barbara Stanwyck, Irene Dunn, Anne Sheridan, Claudette Colbert, and lots of others. It's easy to do and quick. And you can be sure that when Barbara arrives at Loretta Young, her eyes all bright with excitement, her complexion will be looking its freshest and loveliest. An active lather facial is a wonderful beauty pickup at any time of day. And as a protection to the skin, a Lux Toilet Soap facial at bedtime is important. You know, lots of women, without realizing it, gradually spoil their own looks through careless cleansing. Lux Toilet Soap Active Lather does a thorough job, a sure job. Get three cakes of Lux Toilet Soap, that's the economical way, and give your skin 30 days of regular active lather beauty care. See if you don't find Lux Toilet Soap care really works. Gives you wonderful help in keeping skin smooth, soft, and attractive. The way you want it to be. The way it ought to be. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Curtain rises on the third act of Mama Loves Papa. <clears throat> it's said that troubles never come singly, but in series of three. Wilbur Todd has become involved with Mr. McIntosh, number one. His good wife, Jessie, is on the verge of leaving him, number two. And now to the mayor's office comes misfortune number three, in the person of the Citizens Committee. Mr. Mayor, the graft in this city must end. We have the press behind us, the voters, and the majority of our public officials. But nothing can be done unless we attack the evil at its source. A mere handful of grasping politicians who have a stranglehold on our city's finances. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. I need to tell you that you have my wholehearted support. But you can't expect me to take action on every city official in the hopes of punishing the few guilty ones. I must have names. Mr. Mayor, we have the names. Just look at this list. At the top stands Mr. Franklin McIntosh. And here below are the men in his pay. Men he's had appointed to influential positions in order to milk the budget down to the last dollar. Mr. Mayor, this committee demands the immediate arrest of every person on this list. Gentlemen, we'll take action at once. Won't you think it over? Please, Mama, you can't walk out on me like this. What's the use of talking, Wilbur? We went all over this last night. Look, Mama, I'll give up my job as commissioner. I'll find something else. I never wanted to be a big shot anyway. You can't do that. I won't let you. I always knew you had it in you, Wilbur. It just took a little coaxing to bring it out, that's all. And someday, Wilbur, you're going to be a big man in this town. I can feel it coming now, and I'm not going to interfere. Hand me that brick, dear. Mama, you wouldn't interfere. You could be a big woman. No, no, not me. I'd only hold you back. And I want you to get everything that's coming to you. I'll get it. Yes? Good morning. We're from the city hall. Come in, please. Thanks. Wilbur, they're from the city hall. Oh, I can't bother with that now. I'm not coming down this morning, boy. Oh, no? No. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Todd. But well, so am I. Just let me alone, boys. I'm in trouble. Well, he says he's in trouble, Joe. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll beat it, boys. Cramp. Sure, sure. You better get the cuffs, Joe. All oh, set. Hey, what do you mean, cuffs? What is this? Oh, it's very simple, Mr. Todd. You're under arrest. Arrest? Wilbur, what have you done? I'm Max. Hey, let me alone. Come on, Todd. Oh, oh Wilbur. Oh, Wilbur. <laughs> Listen, what is this? I haven't done anything. Of course not. Of course not. Oh, Mama, don't cry. This is a mistake, that's all. Oh, Wilbur. They can't put me in jail. They can't do it, Mama. They don't dare put me in jail. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. Stay up down there. 
quiet. Let me out of here. You can't do this to me. I got right. I'll have the law on you. Uh, shut up. Pipe down. Okay, Sid. Here's your man. Yeah, hello, Commissioner. Who are you? Sid, the name. Just call me Sid. Open up here, officer. What do you want? I come down to get you out. You're a free man, Commissioner. Oh, I am, huh? Why, sure. <laughs> you don't think Mr. McIntosh will let you stay in jail. <laughs> No, sir. I got a writ for you, see? Oh, boy. <laughs> That's quick work. Hey, when you're one of the boys, it's always quick work. Come on, Commish. Mr. McIntosh wants to see you. Oh, he does, eh? Well, that's fine, because I want to see Mr. McIntosh. <laughs> well, well, gentlemen, I see you're all here. No casualties, I hope. Only one, Mr. McIntosh. Just a little mistake, boy, that's all. The Citizens Committee got a little overambitious. <laughs> yeah. These things happen every once in a while, but it'll all blow over. As long as we all stick together, gentlemen, they can't prove a thing. No, sir. Here's the last one, Mr. McIntosh. The commission tells. Well, come in, Todd. Come in. I'm glad to see you. I want to speak to you, Mr. McIntosh. Sure, sure. Have a cigar? I don't smoke. Listen, do you know where I was? I was just in jail. No. Well, that happens to the best of us, son. It happened to most of us this morning. Huh? <laughs> sure, but here we all are. Oh, have a drink? I don't drink either, and I want to know what this is all about. Now, look, Todd, you're a big boy now. There isn't really any Santa Claus, you know, except me. I've been St. Nick to the boys here for a long time. <laughs> oh, oh, I get it. What? Why, you're nothing but a bunch of crooks. Now, you take it easy, Todd. You got me this commissioner's job so you could put over some more funny deals. What are you talking about, more funny deals? Oh, I know. I may look pretty dumb, but I know how to read. You've been selling a lot of playground stuff to the city, and all they've got to show for it is bills. Well, the equipment uh... in the playgrounds is just the same. Has been the same for the last seven years. Not one piece of that new equipment was ever delivered. So what? Well, you're not going to get away with it. That's so what. I'll expose you and your friends, and they'll run you out of town. On a rail. That's what. Fine. And you'll be right there with us, Todd. You know that, I suppose. I haven't done anything. You gave me an order, Commissioner. Or don't you remember last night? Last night? I don't remember anything about last night. All right, then just take my word for it. You're all sewed up in this deal, Commissioner. And you'll string along or land in jail. And this time I'll forget to send Sid down with a writ. All right, Mr. McIntosh. I guess you've got me where you want me. Well. So maybe I'll just have to land in that jail. What? Now, don't be a fool, Todd. Mr. McIntosh, I'm not cut out for this, and I can't argue with you. I'm just an ordinary small-timer without too much brain. But I've got what you might call a conscience. Now, look. You're not just fooling around with politics. You're fooling around with the health and the safety of little kids. Well, you... Now, maybe I can stay out of jail all right by stringing along with you. But I'm not going to stay out of jail if it means sending some kid to the hospital. What? Now, you just go ahead and do your worst to me, because that's what I'm going to do to you. Paper, paper, read all about it. Commissioner Todd exposes her. Commissioner Todd tells all. Commissioner Todd and Graff bring an expose. Mama, Mama, are you home? Mama, she's gone. No, I'm not, Wilbur. Oh, you're still here, huh? I've been waiting for you. I couldn't leave without, well, while you were in jail. You got out all right, huh? Well, I'm out now, but something tells me it's just a temporary arrangement. What happened, Wilbur? I gave that Mr. McIntosh a piece of my mind. I told him off, all right. Him and his whole crowd. They're crooks, Mama. No. Sure. There it is in the paper. See? Oh, but why, you're here, too. Oh, yeah, I'm all over it. Wilbur, what's going to happen now? Well, first of all, I resigned. You mean you have no job? I haven't got anything. Well, I guess I was born to be a failure. You'll be better off without me, Mama. Oh, now, wait. You just sit down there and rest. What you need is a nice hot cup of coffee. But, Mama, don't you have to catch a train or something? What train? But you said now you... Now, don't argue. You're just tired and hungry. I'll go see what's in the icebox. 
Mama. What? They're here, Mama. They've come to get me. Oh, don't worry. I'll wait for you, Wilbur. If it's 20 years. Open up here. Open up here. Open up. Goodbye, Mama. Goodbye, Wilbur. Come to see me in jail, will you? Yes, Wilbur. I'll bring you some nice cigars. <laughs> I don't smoke, Mama. Mr. Todd here? Yes, he is. All right, gentlemen. Here. Hey. Say, what? Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Mr. Todd. Just a little expression of appreciation from the Simpsons Club of Glendale. You've done a fine job, Mr. Todd. We'll have every one of those cooks in jail by morning. But what about Wilbur? Mr. Todd, your husband is public spirited citizen number one. Oh! oh Mama, it's a dream. Wake me up. Todd, Todd, you old rascal, you. Oh, Mr. Cutler. <laughs> Wonderful work, Todd. Wonderful. That was a brilliant idea of yours. What idea, Mr. Kirkwood? <laughs> Why, getting in with those crooks just so we could expose them. A regular undercover man, eh, Todd? <laughs> undercover man? Sure, sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. And listen, Todd, if you're not going to be too busy, I've got a job waiting for you. The managership of the Kirkwood Furniture Company. Manager? Mama, did you hear? Oh, I always knew you'd be a big man, Wilbur. <laughs> oh, wait. Mr. Kirkwood, I don't want it. Huh? Just, just give me back my desk and my old job. That's all. Anything you say, Todd. Speak! 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 Wilbur! A speech! They want you to make a speech. What'll I say? What'll I say? Go ahead, Wilbur. Go ahead. <laughs> my dear fellow citizens... All I got to say is, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> the curtain falls on Mama Loves Papa. And returning to the footlights now for a curtain call are two of America's foremost actors. What are you staring at, McGee? Oh, I don't want to miss seeing two of America's foremost actors. <laughs> I think he means us, McGee. Us, Ma? Yeah. Oh, oh, gee. Oh, thanks, Mr. DeMille. Oh, I can't think of a word to say. <laughs> that won't last long. Silver, <laughs> I've seen a long line of actors in the American theater. Edwin Booth, Henry Irving, Mansfield, Southern... All the Barrymores, but you two... I think uh, you're right, Mr. DeMille. Careful, McGee. <laughs> Can't disagree with a man like Mr. DeMille. <laughs> but, Fibber, you, you didn't let me finish. Oh, now, let's not change the subject. I was just going to suggest that if you ever get in a spot to Mr. Er, uh, <laughs> C.B., <laughs> you know, Clark Gable or Spencer Tracy might break a leg on the way to the broadcast sometime, I'd only be too glad McGee. to... Huh? The night your Clark Gable, can I be Myrna Lloyd? <laughs> Don't interrupt, Molly. Well, well, as I was saying, C.B., that if you ever need anybody to pinch hit for a Gable, I'll be glad to fill in. <laughs> your generosity, Fibber, is surpassed only by your courage. Well, uh... <laughs> Well, now that you're a great actor, McGee, let me be just uh, Molly McGee and... Uh... And that's being something, Molly, as millions of people can testify... Well, now, just for that, Mr. DeMille, I'll tell you a bit of news you'll be wanting to hear. No, no, Molly, no. Quiet, dearie, quiet. Why shouldn't I tell Mr. DeMille I use Lux Soap, even if I'm not Myrna Lloyd? <laughs> you don't have to be a movie star to use Lux Soap. And that's the truth, McGee. The less looks we have, the more important it is to keep what we've got. And it's a dandy piece of soap, that Lux is. <laughs> I've never heard it put better, Molly. Uh, don't forget about me helping out in place of uh, Clark Gable, C.B. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be turning his head if that's possible, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> we won't need it yet, Molly. Next Monday night, and I hope I've recovered my voice from the 300 Northwest Mounted Policeman I just left it with at the studio. <laughs> but next Monday night, we're counting on Gloria Jean, Robert Cummings, Nan Gray, C. Aubrey Smith, and Beulah Bondi. Our play is the underpup. And you'll hear these you'll hear these stars in the same roles they played in the Universal Pictures hit. It's a heartwarming story of a little girl from what some call the wrong side of the track. 
and how she straightens out the troubled lives of a good many people. She isn't really old enough to be an underdog, so so our play is called The Underpup, with 12-year-old Gloria Jean in the same part that brought her fame on the screen. Hey, Molly, we'd better listen in and get some pointers from a play like The Underpup. Yes. Yeah. Well, good night, Mr. DeMille. Good night, all. <laughs> good night, Bella. You were both fabulous, and I'm not kidding. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Gloria Jean, Robert Cummings, Nan Gray, C. Aubrey Smith, and Beulah Bondi in The Underpup. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Heard in tonight's play were Lou Merrill as Mr. McIntyre, Celeste Rush as Mrs. McIntyre, Arthur Q. Bryan as O'Leary, Emery Parnell as Mr. Kirkwood, Linda Douglas as Miss Baedeker, Warren Ash as Dr. Payne, Hal K. Dawson as Burke, Ralph Sedan as Clerk, Abe Reynolds as Sid, Victor Rodman as Thomas, Edward Marr as Soapbox Orator, John P. as Photographer, James Eagles as Attendant, Kay Sutton as Gwenny, Barbara Jean Wong as Little Girl, Dwayne Thompson as Mother, Wally Mayer as Policeman, and Philip Steed as Broken. Fibber McGee and Molly appeared tonight through the courtesy of the makers of Johnson's Wax. Our play tonight was an adaptation of the Paramount picture, Mama Loves Papa. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruiz. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.